PC, accounting for your future. Hi, this is Steve from APC. So welcome to this accounting standard makes it easy video. So in this video, we're going to introduce to you the IAS number eight. With something to do with the accounting policies. Accounting estimates. And how we're going to deal with some of the errors uh, that we can find from the last year's financial statement. Of course, a lot of these companies uh, would use the different accounting policies to manipulate the profit as well as the accounting estimate. And we're going to show you some of the examples here so that we're going to uh, be familiar with how we're going to manipulate the financial statements later on. But from the professional accountant's perspective, we should never do that. Okay, so uh, uh, so the first thing we're going to introduce to you is what do I mean by accounting policy? So a lot of students uh, get stuck here in this aspect. So he's going to ask himself, what is the accounting policy? I'm not sure what is it, I mean, what is it all about? So, I mean, from the IAS number eight perspective, accounting policy has something to do with the recognition, measurements, and presentation aspect. This means, as long as something to do with this one of these three aspects, that will be the accounting policies used by the business. So firstly, we're going to talk about the uh, recognition. So for example, under the IAS number 23 inches expense, we can call it the borrowing costs. We can either recognize it as the asset by capitalize it as the addition to the non-current asset. Alternatively, we're going to show that as the inches expense into the P&O. So either go to recognize it as an asset or expense is your choice. It's your accounting policy. That's first example. Measurements, for example, under the IAS number 16, property, plants and equipment. So for the property, plants and equipment, for the subsequent measurements, we can either use the cost model or the revaluation model to measure the value of the PPE. So it is your choice, either going to use cost model or the revaluation model. It's entirely up to you. That is your accounting policy. For presentation though, one of the popular examples would be the depreciation expense. You can either present this depreciation expense into the cost of sales within the P&L statement. Alternatively, you can present that into the admin costs or you can call it administration expenses. It's entirely up to you. You're going to present wherever you want. But making sure when choosing accounting policy, you have to reflect the true position of the company. That's very, very important. So for example, within the oil industry, we talk about the measurements, for example, the IS number two, inventory. When measuring the cost of those inventory, we can either use the FIFO or the weighted out costs. But for the oil industries, for example, we tend to use the weighted out costs because each of these units of oil cannot be easily separated from each other. So we're not sure what comes in first and what goes out first. It's very hard to identify those particular oil. So we're going to tend to use the weighted out costs as the accounting policy when measuring for those inventory. Okay, so that's uh, all for those accounting policies. So what do I mean by accounting estimate? It's something to do with your industry experience. So for example, here for APC, we're measuring the back day expenses, uh, but before that, we're going to estimate the allowance for doubt for debt. Of course, here at the APC, we are the education company, so it's very, very impossible for a customer uh, to, I mean, uh, 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 trying to delay their payments or uh, default on their payments because we always require the customer to give us money first before we give them classes. 
So for the education company, for example, the allowance for doubt for that will be relatively small compared to some of the construction industries, for example. It is all about your experience. It's all about your estimate. Are you going to estimate that to be 2% of the total value of the sales as the allowance for doubt for that? Alternatively, you're going to estimate that as 5% it's entirely up to you. Another example within the accounting estimate would be the share base payment. So for some of the uh, directors, for example, here with APC, APC would give them shares. But, you know, the total amount of shares uh, that the APC is going to give those uh, directors will be accounted for as the expense here for the APC. But how much are we going to account it for then? When we're going to estimate five directors will leave in the next year. So that's our estimate. When we're going to estimate seven of them will leave APC next year. That's the accounting estimate as well. So accounting estimate is all depending upon your CEO or the finance director's own experience, their own judgment. Okay, so that's for the accounting policy as well as the accounting estimate. What about for the errors? Of course, the errors we're talking about if in a current year financial statement, we found last year's financial statement is contains an error. And as a result of it, we need to correct it. Okay. So if it is material, as you say, or if it is significant, if there's a fraudulent transaction happening in the last year's account, the sales revenue has been overestimated by uh, $1 million. Of course, it would affect the current year's equity because the last year's balance would be the opening balance of this year. Okay, so we're going to uh, correct those account uh, numbers because it will affect this year's result. Okay, so that's what the Iceland A is going to do. Of course, in the later course, we're going to introduce to you what if there will be changes in accounting policy, changes in accounting estimates during the year. So how are we going to deal with them as well? So hope you enjoyed this lecture and looking forward to seeing you in the next of our accounting standard video. APC, accounting for your future.